Yo, what's up guys? Uh, it's Noah here, and in today's video, we're going to take a final look at the Week 4 NFL slate on DraftKings and Yahoo. Uh, we're going to do a final position-by-position position breakdown of the slate, quarterback through tight end. You know, We might touch on defense uh, towards the end of the video, but we won't spend too much time on defense. Mainly quarterback through tight end is where we're going to talk about You know, guys I like at each position. I'm not going to talk about every single player on the slate. You know, I know my videos lately have been really, really long, like 40, 45 minutes long. I am going to try and condense these videos, you know, moving forward to about 20 to 30 minutes. Really just want to hit on the guys that I like most at each position. You know, four, five, six guys I like uh, that I feel like I'm going to have the most exposure to. So we'll do that for DraftKings. You know, we'll talk about some guys I like on DK. We will hit on some guys that I do like over on Yahoo, uh, looking at Yahoo's pricing as well. But before we do get started, guys, as always, I would appreciate it if you would hit that like button down below. And be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Um, I am uploading a ton of NFL content right now. I'm getting up some NBA videos as well for the NBA Finals uh, for the showdown slate. So do have a ton of content on the channel. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell as well. So that way you do get notified every time I upload. Uh, and if you're a regular here, if you do you know, really enjoy these YouTube videos and if they do help you, I have more content available on Patreon. You can check that out, link down below in the description. You can see all that I have to offer on Patreon if that does interest you. Uh, like I said, link is down in the description. But yeah, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at quarterback for this week four slate. You know, I really just want to touch on the guys that I like most this week. I'm not going to hit on every single player. So, you know, the top guys, Lamar, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, you know, obviously these guys are in play. I have concerns, though. You know, the price tag for Lamar, 8100 Look, he hasn't looked that great this year. He hasn't been that good for fantasy. You know, I do expect him to turn it around. I don't expect him to be as bad as he has been. But there are just other guys that are cheaper that I feel have, you know, close to the amount of upside that Lamar does. For example, a guy like Kyler Murray we'll talk about. You know, Cam Newton for 6,400 I like. So don't really see myself paying up for, like, Lamar or Russell Wilson. You know, Russ has been awesome, but I do have some concerns here against the Dolphins. You know, Seattle could get up to a big lead. We could definitely see Russ, you know, handing the ball off a lot in the second half, you know, just running the ball a lot, killing the clock, you know, looking to get out of there with a win. So Patrick Mahomes would probably be my favorite guy if I had to pay up for someone. You know, not the best matchup here against the Patriots, but Mahomes is just so good. You know, his offense is so good. He has so many weapons. I still expect him to have a pretty good game. You know, this game does have some shootout potential. I believe right now it does have a pretty high total. We have a, yeah, 52 and a half total in the Patriots-Chiefs game. So, Mahomes is interesting at 7,400, but I still think I prefer Kyler Murray over him. I think right now, Kyler Murray is probably my favorite quarterback on the board just overall, especially when you factor in price and, you know, his price tag compared to everyone else's. So Kyler gets a fantastic spot this week against the Panthers. I mean, the Panthers, in terms of defense, like, they're probably one of the worst defensive teams in the league. Their pass defense is terrible. Their run defense is terrible. They don't have a good secondary at all. I mean, Kyler has so much upside this week. Like, he's shown... He has, you know, that rushing upside that Lamar does. That's one of the reasons I don't feel like I need to pay 8100 for Lamar because we have a guy like Kyler Murray who can legit, you know, rush for 70, 80 yards, can, you know, obviously throw for 250, 300 yards. Like, he's got 300-yard upside, 100 rushing yard upside in him. Like, he could legit get the bonus for each, you know, passing and rushing. The dude just has so much upside. When they get down to the goal line, like, they're using him a lot at the goal line. They're running, like, read options. They're running RPO plays. Like, they're getting Kyler Murray rushing touchdowns, which just obviously, you know, boosts his upside even more. He does have a rushing touchdown in every game so far this season. The matchup's fantastic. Pretty high total in this game as well. Another game that does have some shootout potential. Uh, right now, 51 total in the Panthers-Cardinals game. Three and a half point spread. Really, really like Kyler this week. I think he's a little bit too cheap. You know, when you factor in his price compared to all the other guys above him, especially when you factor in, you know, the matchup against the Panthers. So really like Kyler. I think he's my favorite quarterback on the board. I do like him a lot over on Yahoo as well. Kind of the same story. You know, he's coming in cheaper than guys like Mahomes, Lamar, Russell Wilson. Like those guys are way more expensive than Kyler. So definitely going to be saving the salary and going to uh, Kyler over, you know, some of those top tier guys, especially like in my main cash game lineup. I think for me, in my main lineup, it's probably going to come down to either Kyler Murray, Cam Newton, or, you know, paying down for Ryan Fitzpatrick, who we'll talk about in a second. But that's kind of it for like 7K and above. Now in the 6K range, I think there's two guys that I really like here. Deshaun Watson at home against the Vikings. I mean, 
Deshaun Watson, he's not been good so far for fantasy. You know, 21, 15, 18 DK points, but he has had some brutal matchups against the Steelers, against the Ravens. You know, I thought he would had a I thought he would play a little bit better than he did in that opening night game against the Chiefs. But now he gets a great spot, you know, back at home in the dome against the Vikings. I mean, this Vikings team, their defense, nowhere near as good as they used to be. Like defensively, they're probably one of the worst defensive teams in the league. Their secondary is terrible. They lost a lot of guys in their secondary. You know, they're running out a bunch of rookies. I really like Deshaun Watson here. I think we see a big bounce back game from him this week. This is another game that has a high total, another game that has, you know, some shootout potential. In tournaments, I think Watson's more interesting. You know, for cash games, I don't know if I'm going to play him in cash because I think I would just, I would rather get up to Kyler if I can. But I do really like Deshaun Watson at 6,600 in that mid range. Talked about Cam Newton in my first look video. I still like him a ton this week. You know, 6,400 for Cam. I just think it's a little bit too cheap when you factor in that the Patriots, you know, they're underdogs here. They're probably going to have to throw the ball more than they normally would. You know, this is a pretty run-heavy team. This is a team that does want to run the ball a lot. But we saw week two when they faced the Seahawks. You know, when they get behind, they'll let Cam throw the ball, you know, 35, 40, 45 times if they're trailing. That was the case week two. Cam had a huge game, 38 DraftKings points. We know he's another guy that, you know, when they get down to the goal line, when the Patriots get down to the goal line, like, they will let Cam run it in. They're running, you know, design plays to get Cam rushing touchdowns. I'm pretty sure, you know, all four of his rushing touchdowns this season have came, you know, at the goal line or within the five, and they've all been, like, design runs for Cam. The upside is just through the roof for him, especially when the Patriots are going to be playing from behind. Whenever they have to throw the ball more, like, Cam's upside is through the roof, and, you know, that's the case this week here against the Chiefs. I believe right now they are seven-and-a-half-point underdogs or seven-point underdogs on the road. So really like Cam in the 6K range, really like Deshaun Watson. I think those are the two guys that, you know, I like most in that price range. And in my tournament lineups, you know, I usually play one main cash game lineup that I run in, like, you know, all my double-ups, head-to-heads, single-entry stuff. And then I'll play, like, three tournament teams. And I think one of my tournament teams, I'm for sure going to have Deshaun Watson. One of my tournament teams, I'm definitely going to have Cam Newton. And then I guess it's to be determined who's going to be in that third spot. I will just have to see. But definitely going to have exposure to Watson and Cam. I think both guys uh, do look pretty good in this price range. And then in terms of value, you know, if we're going 6K and below, if we're looking for cheap options, I think Matthew Stafford is definitely viable as a cheap option. Back at home in, you know, in the dome here against the Saints, you know, Stafford's someone that I was pretty high on heading into the season. He hasn't looked that great so far, you know, just 17, 17 and 18 DraftKings points through three games. This is a good spot, though, this week against the Saints, a game that does have a ton of shootout potential. I'm pretty sure right now this game actually is like second highest on the slate in terms of total uh, the Cowboys and the, or the Cowboys and the Browns have a 56 total, which leads the slate. But this Saints and Car- or this uh, Saints and Lions game is at 54, which I believe is second highest, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think that's or it's tied for second highest with the Dolphins and Seahawks. So Vegas is expecting a lot of points scored here. You know, the Saints, their offense, although they haven't looked that great so far, like although Drew Brees has not looked that good. I mean, this Saints team does still have a pretty explosive offense. They're going to put points on the board. I do expect the Lions to be playing from behind. I really like Stafford here at home. You know, he's always been much, much better at home. You just look throughout his career, he's always played better in the Dome. And, you know, this week against the you know the Saints team that is pretty good defensively, but shootout-wise, you know, that's what I really target. I want high total games. I want my quarterbacks to be playing in high total games. And, you know, that's the case this week with Matthew Stafford. So I do like him at 5,900. You know, he doesn't have, like, rushing upside like some of the other guys we talked about, but if they get behind, like, they'll let Matthew Stafford throw the ball 40, 45 times. Like, he has 300-plus yard upside, multiple touchdowns. Like, he could legit throw for 350 yards and four touchdowns in this game, and I would not be surprised at all. So I do like Stafford as a value for 5,900. You know, on the other side, I think Drew Brees is fine for 5,800, but I do I probably would rather go with Stafford over Brees. Both guys are viable, though. Baker Mayfield I actually have some interest in this week. You know, the Browns are a team that, you know, likes to run the ball a lot. They they haven't really getting, given Baker Mayfield the chance to, like, throw the ball around. You know, he only had 23 pass attempts week two against the Bengals, just 23 pass attempts last week against Washington. He did throw the ball close to 40 times, though, against the Ravens in week one. You know, I think this is a spot where we could see the Browns have to throw more. This Cowboys offense is pretty explosive. They're going to put points on the board. I could see the Browns playing from behind this week and, you know, have to throw more. This game right now has the highest uh, total on the slate like we talked about. 
so many good plays on both sides. You know, obviously like Zeke, Dak are in play. You know, Amari Cooper, Gallup, C.D. Lamb. You can target all those guys. Even Dalton Schultz on the Cowboys side. I think all six of those guys are viable this week. On the Brown side, you know, I think Baker Mayfield's in play. Nick Chubb, I have some interest in, especially depending on what happens with Kareem Hunt. Uh, Kareem Hunt, you know, been dealing with the injury. If he were to sit, I mean, Nick Chubb would be an awesome play this week. Odell, I really like for a bounce back week. You know, I think we're going to see a big Odell game pretty soon. Jarvis Landry, I think, is in play as well. Like, there's just so many good plays on the or in this game. I'm going to have some Baker Mayfield. You know, he's not going to be one of my highest on quarterbacks. But if I'm playing, you know, more than three lineups, you know, in my three max lineups, I don't think Baker Mayfield makes it into one of my three lineups. But for, if I'm playing like 10 lineups, I would have some exposure to Baker Mayfield. I would probably look to stack him up with either Odell or Jarvis Landry because I think the upside is there in a shootout this week against the Cowboys. Definitely wanted to, you know, mention Baker Mayfield. But lastly, we'll talk about Ryan Fitzpatrick. I think as like in terms of cash game value, you know, if, if I'm looking to pay down in my cash lineup at quarterback so I can jam in, you know, maybe another stud, Ryan Fitzpatrick's probably the guy that I would look to pay down for at home here against the Seahawks. Very favorable spot for Fitzpatrick. You know, high total, 54 total. Right now, the Dolphins are pretty big underdogs even at home. So game script, always going to favor them, you know, passing the ball. I mean, this is not a very good offensive team, or this is not a very good defensive team, I should say. You know, the Seahawks are going to put up points for sure against this Dolphins defense. Most likely, Fitzpatrick and the Dolphins are going to be playing from behind. We're going to see him, you know, have to throw the ball probably 35, 40 times, if not more. If it, Fitzpatrick has shown upside, especially when he gets good matchups, and this is a good matchup this week, definitely a beatable spot against the Seahawks defense. Uh, the Seahawks have allowed the most passing yards in the league so far. So I like Fitzpatrick at 5,400. I think, you know, as a cheap option, he makes a ton of sense at this price tag. You know, between him and Kyler, it's going to be close. You know, I think it's going to come down to what do I want to do, you know, with the rest of my lineup. If I'm trying to jam in another expensive running back into my lineup, then I'm probably going to have to pay down for Fitzpatrick. But if I find some good mid-range options that I like, that I'll either pay up for Kyler Murray. It's going to come down to one of those two guys, most likely for my main lineup, either Kyler or Fitzpatrick. We'll just have to see come Sunday. But I do like both guys a ton. I think as a value, under 6K, overall, Fitzpatrick is probably my favorite play at 5,400, you know, under under 6K. But let's move on to running back now. I do want to talk about, you know, the top options that we have at this position. I think Kamara and Zeke both look like excellent plays this week. You know, if I were to pay down for Fitzpatrick in my main lineup, I would most likely be doing that so that I could pay up for both Kamara and Zeke. You know, I want to get at least one of these two guys in my main cash lineup. I think right now I do lean Alvin Kamara over Zeke, but both guys, like I said, are excellent plays. Just looking at Kamara, though, 8K on DraftKings still does feel a little bit too cheap. You know, he's expensive on Yahoo. He's $36, but I still like him a ton over there as well. Uh, So Kamara, he's pretty much been, like, the best running back so far for fantasy this season. He's averaged just over 36 DraftKings points per game. He's coming off a massive game last Sunday night against the Packers where he had 47 DK points, 6 carries for 58 yards, 13 catches for 139 yards, and 2 touchdowns. I mean... The work that Alvin Kamara gets in the passing game just puts him over the top for me in terms of, you know, especially on DraftKings where it's full PPR scoring. Like, getting a running back that can legit catch 10 balls is just so, so valuable on DraftKings. And that's the case with Alvin Kamara. You know, I don't know if he's going to get 14 targets again because I believe Michael Thomas is expected back this week. But Kamara still gets, you know, 6, 8, 9, close to 10 targets even when, you know, Thomas is healthy. He's still going to get close to 10 to 15 carries as well. Like, his workload is just so secure in this offense. The passing game usage is through the roof. And in a shootout here against the Lions, I think we see another big game from Kamara. I like him a ton at 8K on DraftKings. He is my favorite running back to pay up for. I like Zeke a ton, though. You know, I think Zeke's a great play as well in a uh, high-scoring game, a potential shootout against the Browns. Very similar to Kamara. I mean, Zeke just gets so much volume. 25 touches, 28 touches, 20 touches. Like, he's pretty much a lot to get 20-plus touches this week. Gets work at the passing game as well. You know, doesn't get the massive usage that Kamara does, but four targets week one, seven targets week two, 11 targets week three. Like, they are using Zeke a lot in the passing game. He's obviously going to get, you know, 15 to 20 carries pretty much every week. Going to be logged in for pretty much all the goal line work as well. You know, if they get down to the goal line nine times out of ten, they're just going to hand it off to Zeke and let him punch it in for the touchdown. So his touchdown upside or his touchdown equity, I should say, is so, so high. I mean, it's pretty much a lock that Zeke scores at least one touchdown every week, it seems like. 
that's what he's done so far this season. You know, he does have a rushing touchdown every week. I like the matchup. You know, I, I like the high-scoring game. I like the game environment. Zeke at 7,800 does also feel, you know, too cheap. I mean, last week he had a floor game, and he still gave you 17 DraftKings points. Like, his floor is just so, so high. He's got, you know, a 35, 40-point ceiling, very similar to Alvin Kamara. I like both guys a ton. You know, if I can only choose one, I think I do lean with Kamara over Zeke, but I think both guys are excellent plays, and if I can, I'm probably going to be trying to fit in both into my main lineup if possible. I'm just going to have to sacrifice the other positions, but, you know, we talked about Fitzpatrick. You could drop down to a quarterback. We'll talk about some receivers I like, you know, in the 5K range and for value as well. Uh, but guys like Dalvin Cook, you know, Eckler, Chubb, I think these guys are in play. They're just more of tournament options for me. I think for cash, I'm going to be really, you know, just keying in on Kamara and Zeke. You know, Chubb, I do want to talk about. So right now, we don't know Kareem's hunt status yet. Uh, he did not participate in Thursday's practice. I am recording this video on Friday morning, so we haven't gotten, you know, Friday practice reports yet. I mean, if if uh, Kareem Hunt winds up out and does not play, there is a very good chance that I will be trying, trying to jam in Nick Chubb into my main lineup. And I'll probably be, you know, I think Nick Chubb would probably be a better play over Kamara and over Zeke because he would just get so much volume if Kareem Hunt were to sit. He'd get all the work in the passing game as well. Like we saw last season before, or before Kareem Hunt came to the team, I mean, Nick Chubb was getting like 20 plus touches every single week, getting massive usage in the passing game. Like that would be the case this week if Kareem Hunt were to sit. I assume that Hunt plays, you know, normally when guys are limited during the week, they normally wind up playing. But we'll just have to keep an eye on that. If Hunt winds up out, Chubb does get a big, big boost and would become a really, really strong play at 7K. Uh, but in the 6K range, you know, there's some tournament plays I like in this mid-tier. I think Jonathan Taylor in tournaments does make some sense. I mean, he's still just going to get massive usage every week with Marlon Mack on IR. Even against the Bears, you know, at 6,600, I have an interest in him in tournaments. James Robinson as well against the Bengals. I like that matchup a lot. You know, he's going to get massive usage. He is clearly the number one running back for the Jags right now. Coming off a huge game last Thursday night against the Dolphins. I do like James Robinson at uh, 6,500. I think, you know, he's viable. Clyde Edwards-Alaire as well. You know, brutal spot against the Patriots, but just going to get so much volume. You know, going to get 10 to 15 carries. Gets a lot of work in the passing game. 6,400 for CEH. Does put him on my radar as well. But I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think in terms of like cash game, optimal plays, it's Kenyon Drake for me in terms of like cash games. Uh, Joe Mixon, I think, is cash viable as well. Kenyon Drake, though, at 6K, I like a ton this week. I mean, look, he's been bad. You know, without a doubt, he has not looked good. 16 carries uh, week uh, week one, two catches. 20 carries week two, uh, two catches in that game. And then 18 carries last week, one catch. You know, his, his work in the passing game is a concern. He's only got two, two, and one target through three weeks, which, you know, for Kenyon Drake, that's pretty, pretty low. Last season, we saw him, you know, get five, six, close to seven targets a game. Hasn't get or hasn't gotten as much usage in the passing game out as I would like, but the volume is still there, still getting a ton of carries, and the matchup this week is about as good as it gets against the Panthers. I mean, the Panthers last season had the worst run defense in the league, and this season, it doesn't look like much is going to change. They're, they've been getting torched by opposing running backs. They pretty much become like the flow chart. You pretty much just play whatever running back is going up against the Panthers. Drake, we know, has massive upside. You know, I know we haven't gotten that huge game out of him yet, but it's coming, it's coming sooner rather than later, especially with him just still getting so much volume. He's eventually going to have a game where he gets into the end zone multiple times and puts up, you know, 25 DK points. That sure enough could happen this week. I think Kenyon Drake at 6K does look like a really strong option. You know, between, for cash games for me this week, I think it's, I'm playing three of these four guys. I'm playing three of, you know, Kamara, Zeke, Drake, Mixon. Three of those four guys are probably going to be in my cash game lineup. It's just going to be, you know, trying to figure out which three I do play. Right now, I think for sure I'm going to be going to, you know, Kamara. Probably going to be going to Drake as well. It'll come down to, you know, do I pay down at quarterback and go with Fitzpatrick, Zeke, or do I pay up for Murray and go with like Murray and Mixon? Right now, I think I lean Murray Mixon because I do like Joe Mixon a lot. We'll talk about him in a second. But Drake at 6K, I have a ton of interest in. You know, I'm not as interested in him, interest in, in him on Yahoo because he is priced up over there. He is coming in at $28 on Yahoo. Like, he's more expensive than Nick Chubb. He's more expensive than, like, even Miles Sanders in that Sunday night game. He's way more expensive than, like, Eckler and Robinson. So I probably won't be playing uh, Kenyon Drake much on Yahoo, but on DraftKings at 6K, I like him a lot over there. Uh, but Joe Mixon, you know, another guy that I want to talk about, very similar to Kenyon Drake, 
the game log doesn't look pretty. You know, we haven't gotten a big game yet from Joe Mixon, but the volume is still there. 20 touches week one, 20 touches week two, 19 touches last week against the Eagles. Still locked in for, you know, about 20 plus touches a week. Game script this week should probably favor the running game. You know, you would expect the Bengals most likely will win this game. Should have a lead heading into the second half. You know, even if they're playing from behind, they will use Joe Mixon so much in the passing game that he still has upside even if they are playing from behind. And very similar to Drake, like, we're eventually going to have a game where Joe Mixon scores multiple touchdowns. You know, with how much volume he's getting, with him being locked into the goal line work, eventually there's going to be a game where he gets, you know, multiple touchdowns. I'm pretty sure they were they were at the one-yard line twice last week against the Eagles, and they threw two one-yard touchdowns to uh, T. Higgins. Like, they got down to the one, and T. Higgins scored both times at the one-yard line. Most of the times, I would say, you know, nine times out of ten, when they get down to the one, they're just going to hand it off to Joe Mixon and let him punch it in. Eventually, we're going to have a game where, you know, he gets two touchdowns, puts up 20-plus DK points. I think it could sure enough come this week against a pretty bad Jaguars defense. At 5,800, it's very, you know, unlikely that we find guys that are locked into 20-plus touches for this cheap. You know, Drake pretty much locked into 20 touches. Mixon locked into 20 touches. And these guys are, you know, 6K on DK, 5,800, and they're facing the Panthers and the Jaguars. So I really like Mixon and Drake in that mid-range. Uh, Mixon at 5,800, really strong play this week in my opinion. On Yahoo, I like Mixon a lot as well. He is very, very cheap over there, coming in at just $20. Definitely going to have him. Most likely in my main lineup on Yahoo. Just looks like a really strong play in that mid-range. And then a couple more guys I want to hit on. So Daryl Henderson's looked really, really good. It doesn't seem like Cam Akers is going to play this week. So Henderson should be locked in for a pretty heavy workload. I think in tournaments, he is viable for sure. Mike Davis as well against the Cardinals. Like, he just looks so good. Been used a ton in the passing game the last few weeks with Christian McCaffrey out. I wouldn't expect his usage to change much. You know, should get more or should continue to get more volume in the passing game. I don't know if we're going to see him catch, you know, eight balls every week, but I think six, five to six targets is a pretty good projection. Should get anywhere from 10 to 15 carries as well. Do have interest in Mike Davis. David Montgomery as well, a tournament play I have some interest in. So with Tariq Cohen on the IR, done for the season, Montgomery should be locked in to probably in every down roll if I had to guess. Like, they're going to play him as much as he can be on the field. Going to get a ton of volume, like should be locked in for probably 20 plus touches, should be locked in for pass game usage as well. Like even with Cohen healthy, they will give Montgomery a few targets, like two or three targets. I think with Cohen out, we could definitely see a game or see this week, a game where Montgomery maybe gets like 13 to 15 carries, maybe five to six targets. Like even against a pretty good Colts defense, I like David Montgomery a lot in tournaments, you know, in cash games. I probably won't be playing him. I'll probably be playing like Drake and Mixon over Montgomery. But for tournaments, I like Montgomery a lot. Now, over on Yahoo, I think Montgomery is actually cash game viable because he is very, very cheap over on Yahoo. He's only $14. Really looks like one of the best value plays on the board on Yahoo. You know, I don't think I'm going to be able to pay up for Zeke and Kamar on Yahoo because I definitely want to get one of those two. I want to get Mixon. And I think Montgomery just looks so good on Yahoo at $14. So, most likely, these are the three running backs I'm going to be building around uh, on Yahoo this week. Montgomery, 14 bucks, just way, way too cheap now that he's locked in for, you know, pretty much in every down roll with Tariq Cohen out. I know he's not the most efficient runner. You know, he's not a guy that's going to, you know, rush for 200 yards. But we could see a situation this week where maybe he gets 15 carries for 75 yards and a rushing touchdown. And maybe he gets, you know, four catches for 30 yards and finishes with like 17, 18 fantasy points. That's pretty damn good for only $14, so... Definitely like Montgomery on Yahoo. Especially, I like him more over there because he's so cheap. But even on DraftKings, I still have interest in him in tournaments. But honestly, I think that's probably it for running back. I think we kind of you know touched on the guys that I like most this week. So let's go ahead and move on to receiver. At the receiver position, at the top, you know I think DeAndre Hopkins is a fantastic play this week. It's going to be very tough to pay up for him, though, especially in cash, because I think you're probably going to be playing one of Kamara or Zeke in cash, if not both of those two guys. It's going to be hard to get, you know, Kamara, Zeke, and Hopkins. You're probably going to have to, you know, if you do want to, you know, maybe not play Hopkins or maybe not play Zeke, you know, maybe you only play Kamara or maybe you only play Zeke, then you could probably get up to Hopkins, but I think I would probably prefer those guys over Hopkins. It's still a great spot, though. I'm going to have interest in him in tournaments. You know, I'm definitely going to have stacks with him and Kyler Murray. 8500 you know, it's expensive price, but the upside is just through the roof for Hopkins this week against this Panthers team. Like, this secondary is so easy to beat. You know, they don't have anyone that's going to be able to slow down Hopkins. 
he's locked into massive usage every week 16 targets 9 targets 12 targets like he's pretty much a lock for you know 10 to 12 targets every week he scored at least 20 DraftKings points in every game so far I wouldn't expect that trend to you know stop here I think 20 plus DK points is probably a reasonable projection for Hopkins and obviously he could you know put put up more than that if I'm paying up a receiver this week I do prefer him over Michael Thomas you know I prefer him like over Lockett as well I like Hopkins a lot you know it's easier to get to him on Yahoo he's $32 over there he's actually cheaper than Michael Thomas so I guess if I were to pay up for Hopkins you know in my main lineup I would probably be doing it on Yahoo just because it's easier to get to him but again you know if you do plug in Hopkins you're probably going to have to sacrifice you know either play I don't think you're going to be able to get like you're going to have to play a really really cheap receiver and there are some that are viable but the mid-range at receiver this week is really really strong we'll talk about some mid-range guys that I do like I just don't think I'm going to be able to get to Hopkins in my main lineup just because I want to pay up at running back but you know tournaments he's a fantastic play I do like him a ton against this Panthers team Uh, but not much else you know besides Hopkins at the top here I think once we get down to this mid-range this is where I find some guys that I really really like I think Mike Evans with Chris Godwin doubtful makes for a really good option at 6,400. You know, it's not the best spot against the Chargers. The Chargers do have a pretty good secondary, but I'm pretty sure Chris Harris is out. He's going to be out for at least like five to six weeks. I know that um, that Derwin James obviously out for the season, and I'm pretty sure Casey Hayward, like he's a good, a good name corner, but I think he's actually kind of struggled this season. Like he hasn't been nearly as good this season as in past years. So the spot, you know, it's beatable for Mike Evans. I think the volume, though, is what I'm really, you know, keying in on for him. He's just going to get targeted so much without Godwin. Uh, some of their other receivers, like Scotty Miller, I think, is banged up heading into this game. I expect Evans to probably get close to 10 targets, if not more. Obviously, when he played the Panthers on uh, week two, Chris Godwin was out that game. and We got seven catches, 104 yards, and a touchdown from Mike Evans. Like, we could definitely see him put up a similar game this week, and it's 6,400. Obviously, they did not adjust his price for Godwin being out. So I do like Mike Evans quite a bit at 6,400. Some other guys uh, in this mid-range, Kenny Galladay, I have some interest in at 6K. Uh, There were some reports that Marshawn Lattimore was dealing with an injury. If he were to sit, it would become a much better matchup for Kenny Galladay. You know, in lineups that have Matthew Stafford, I am definitely going to be looking up or looking to stack up, you know, Stafford and Galladay. I think that makes a ton of sense. Then you can run it back with Kamara. Uh, Definitely, you know, probably a stack that I'm going to have in one of my three main tournament lineups. Uh, Will Fuller, I like a lot, assuming he's able to play. You know, this is a guy that's always dealing with injuries, it seems, but reports seem like he's going to play this week. Really, really good spot for Will Fuller. Like, we could definitely catch a big stealing game from him against this Vikings defense. Uh, The Texans are back at home where they always seem to play better. You know, Watson seems to always play better at home. Will Fuller in the dome at home always seems to have, you know, better numbers as well. And like I said, the matchup's fantastic. Very easy to beat secondary. You know, the Vikings are a team we are definitely going to want to pick on this season. Week two, I mean, I don't know what happened, but Will Fuller didn't get targeted at all. I know he was dealing with some injuries that game, but, you know, bounced back last week against the Steelers, even in a tough spot. Four catches, 54 yards, and a touchdown. Had a really good game in their opening night game against the Chiefs. Eight catches for 112 yards. Like, Will Fuller has massive upside. Going to get a ton of volume with DeAndre Hopkins no longer on the team. Like, Will Fuller should be locked in for close to 10 targets a week. And against this easy-to-beat Viking secondary, I think there's a ton of upside for Will Fuller. I like him a lot at 5,900. Odell I have a ton of interest in as well at 5,800. You know, I mentioned him in my first look video, and I do want to touch on him again. So, very similar to Fuller. You know, he's also questionable heading into this week. So, we'll need to keep an eye on his status. I'm assuming that he plays, but obviously this will be something to monitor. Assuming Odell does play, though, I mean, at 5800 like, this is just such a cheap price tag for Odell, especially when you factor in the matchup against the Cowboys. I mean, this Cowboys defense, their secondary has just been god-awful this season. Like, they haven't been able to slow anyone down. We saw Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf both have monster games last week. Like, I, I could see a scenario if they let the Brown or if they let Baker Mayfield throw the ball. Like, I could see a scenario where you see, you know, big games from both Odell and Jarvis Landry this week. Odell has massive upside still like I know we haven't gotten a big game from him in a while but eventually it's going to come I feel like you know especially it could happen this week especially against you know a beatable Cowboys secondary it's in a dome it's a you know high scoring game 56 total so so much upside for Odell this week like he's honestly probably going to be in consideration for me for cash you know maybe that's not the optimal play to go but I just love the upside that Odell has in this spot you know I'm assuming 
I'm assuming he plays, but that'll be something we need to monitor. If, if he gets ruled out, that's obviously a huge boost for Jarvis Landry, and Jarvis Landry would become a very, very strong play. But I do like both Browns receivers. I think both you know look like great options. You know, If you're playing Fitzpatrick, I think stacking him up with Devontae Parker makes plenty of sense. I do have interest in Parker. I talked about Julian Edelman in my first look video, and I still like him a ton this week. You know, in games where the or in games where the Patriots are playing from behind, which is most likely going to be the case this week, I'm going to have interest in Julian Edelman. We saw him get targeted 11 times week two against Seattle when they were playing from behind. Like we could definitely see another game this week where we get 10, 12 targets from Julian Edelman. In my opinion, he's still Cam's number one go-to guy. Probably going to get the most targets on the team uh, nine times out of 10. You know, every week. So I do like Edelman at 5,700. DJ Moore, I have a ton of interest in as well, and especially, you know, because we're playing Kyler, we got Drake in there. You know, it makes sense to run it back with someone from the Carolina side, and DJ Moore, you know, he got, he had a big game week two against Tampa Bay, eight catches, 120 yards, 23 DK points, but we have yet to see, like, that true explosion game from DJ Moore, 100 plus yards and multiple touchdowns, which is the upside that he has. We saw him put up big games last season, you know, even with uh, Kyle Allen at quarterback, like, DJ Moore had some big games last season. I think getting Teddy Bridgewater is still a boost for this Panthers offense. You know, it's definitely better than having Kyle Allen or having Will Greer at quarterback. I think we are eventually going to see, you know, a big explosion game from DJ Moore. And it for sure could come this week against the Cardinals. I mean, the Cardinals, they still have Patrick Peterson, but he's been nowhere near as good as he used to be. This is definitely a beatable secondary, high-scoring game, a game that does have a high total. Both these teams do play pretty fast as well. They both, you know, run a lot of no-huddle. I like this spot a lot for DJ Moore. I think at 5,600, like he's just too cheap this week when you factor in the upside that he has against this Cardinals team and against this Cardinals defense. I like him a lot in that 5K range, and I think right now he's probably my favorite receiver in that range. But, you know, we talked about a lot of guys. Will Fuller, Odell, Julian Edelman I like as well. You know, even dropping down, like Jarvis Landry I want to mention, 5,100. You know, we haven't gotten a big Jarvis Landry game yet, but it could sure enough come this week in a high-scoring game against the Cowboys if Odell... For some, or for some reason, does not play this week. I'm assuming he does, but if Odell does wind up out, then obviously that's a huge boost for Jarvis Landry. Even if o- Odell plays, like he may be a little bit limited, so that could be a boost for Landry. I like both Browns receivers a ton, though. I think at 5100, Jarvis Landry is definitely in play in that 5K range if you're looking to go a little bit cheaper. And then the, in terms of value plays, like punt plays under 5K. There's two guys I want to hit on under 5K. So Hunter Renfro from 4,600, I do have some interest in. You know, with uh, Henry Ruggs, I believe, has already been ruled out. Brian Edwards has already been ruled out. Like, this Raiders team is just missing so many receivers right now. Obviously, Tyrell Williams is out for the season on IR. Like, Hunter Renfro could be looking at good volume this week. It's a pretty good game script as well. Like, you would expect the Bills probably will win this game. They're probably going to have a lead for most of the game. So the Raiders are most likely going to be playing catch-up and going to be forced to throw. And, you know, the Bills have been killed through the slot this season. They got killed last week against Cooper Cup. They got destroyed by Jamison Crowder week one. Uh, week two, I think Mike Jacecki had a big game against them. Uh, Isaiah Ford did well as well. So you can definitely attack this Bills team, you know, with slot receivers. Hunter Renfro at 4,600. I have some interest in as a chief option. And then Scotty Miller, I do want to mention as well. So with uh, Chris Godwin, you know, most likely going to uh, be out this week. Scotty Miller should benefit there with Chris Godwin out. You know, he hasn't practiced so far this week, so that is something we'll need to monitor. We'll have to see if he practices on Friday. But assuming he's, you know, able to play this week at 4,100, he should be in line for more targets, more, you know, just more offensive snaps with Godwin out. I know he had a bad game week two when Godwin was out against the Panthers, but he did drop a touchdown. You know, he had the opportunity to put up a big game or put up a better game than he did. The opportunity is going to be there for Scotty Miller if he's able to go this week. So at 4,100, if you're looking for a cheap receiver, I think he is viable here with Godwin out. I think, you know, he does make sense as a cheap option under 5K. I think if I can, though, you know, I'm probably going to be trying to live in this 5K range or pay up for Hopkins. Like, there's just so many guys I like here that we talked about. Fuller, Beckham, uh, Edelman, Parker, you know, DJ Moore, Jarvis Landry. Like, these are the guys... I'm probably going to be looking to go to, you know, in my main lineup. Mike Evans as well. You know, we we'll talked we talked about him. But I think that's it for, you know, receiver. Let's talk about tight end real quick. Oh, I did want to mention, you know, DJ Moore. I uh, didn't plug or I haven't plugged him in on Yahoo yet, but I do like DJ Moore over on Yahoo as well. He's only $21 over there. Also, you know, too cheap on Yahoo in my opinion. He should be priced up, you know, in the $24, $25 range with guys like Odell, Thielen, you know, Stephon Diggs, Robinson. The fact that Moore 
only 21 bucks on Yahoo makes him stand out you know over there as well uh, but moving on to tight end, just looking at this position really, really quick. You know, tight end is normally a position I look for value, and I think that's going to be the case this week. You know, in tournaments, you could always pay up for Kelsey. You could always pay up for Mark Andrews. I just don't think I'm going to be able to do that, you know, in my main lineup. So we'll have to look a little bit cheaper. You know, Darren Waller, I do like at 5,200. You know, it's not the best spot against the Bills, but he should just be locked into a, a ton of volume this week with all the injuries to the Raiders receivers. No Henry Ruggs, no Brian Edwards, Tyrell Williams out for the season. Like there is a ton of you know mass or a ton of you know target volume coming Darren Waller's way. I think he gets probably close to double digit targets this week at 5,200. He's for sure in play. Uh, T.J. Hawkinson in that high scoring game against the Saints. I think at 4,800 makes plenty of sense. Evan Ingram I do have interest in at 4,400. You know I just think he's a little bit too cheap. I know he hasn't looked great so far this season. We haven't gotten you know a big game from Evan Ingram yet. But the volume is still there. Seven targets, eight targets, five targets. Like he's probably going to get six to eight targets every week. Game script is normally always going to you know lean towards the Giants having to pass because nine times out of ten they're going to be playing from behind. That should be the case this week against the Rams. They should be forced to throw a lot. And at 4,400, Evan Ingram for the upside that he has. Like I know we haven't gotten the game or a good game from him yet, but this is still one of the better receiving tight ends in the league. At 4,400, I like him a lot as a value play. And then I do want to talk about, you know, I think Gronk could be viable. 3,600 with no Chris Godwin. Like, we saw him actually run a good amount of routes last week. They actually looked to get him involved offensively. Had six catches for 48 yards. You know, without Godwin, I think there is a chance we see, you know, Gronk maybe put up a similar line to what he did last week, if not better. It was great to see him play, you know, more snaps last week, run more routes. Normally, you know, or just in weeks one and two, like, Gronk was mainly just out there to block and not he wasn't really out there you know to obviously catch passes but they got him involved in the passing game last week and I think that could continue here this week especially since Gowan's out so I do like Gronk at 3600 and then lastly I want to talk about Logan Thomas 3500 oh, I have to sneeze <coughs> excuse me Logan Thomas for 3500 so he's been getting targeted like He's been getting, in terms of targets, like he's towards the top of the league in terms of tight end volume, like tight end targets every week. Eight targets week one, two targets week nine, seven targets week three. Like his volume is just so secure in this offense. He's running a ton of routes. He's playing a ton of snaps. Like they are getting him involved in the offense. He did have a solid game week one. He did find the end zone, four catches, 37 yards, and a touchdown. But the last two weeks, he's been pretty disappointing. But but it's, it's, it's the volume for me. Like anytime we're getting a guy close to, you know, 4K or under 4K that's going to get, you know, anywhere from 8 to 10 targets. I'm going to be interested. So for 3,500, especially against the Ravens, you know, the Ravens are obviously a great offensive team. They're going to put up points. Washington right now, even at home, is big underdogs. You would expect them to be playing from behind here, forced to throw. I do like Logan Thomas once again this week at 3,500. You know, I think it's a value tight end. He looks like a pretty strong play. Uh, he's probably my favorite guy overall. I just feel so secure with his you know, involvement in the offense, with how many targets he's getting, with how many routes he's running, with all the snaps, or with how many snaps he's playing. I think he's just, it's, it's going to be hard for him to fail at 3,500. That's the way I'll put it. So in cash games, he makes the most sense to me as a pay down option uh, if I'm looking to go cheap. But I think we kind of covered tight end. So we'll hit on defense really, really quick, guys. You know, I don't spend too much time on defense for me. I really just play whatever defense fits into my lineup, you know, even if that's the Washington or even if it's that even if it's the Dolphins, like I'll play 2K defenses if it lets me get, you know, what I want in the rest of my lineup. So I guess if I just had to pick a few defenses that really really stand out, you know, I think I think the Buccaneers at home against Justin Herbert could be interesting for 3400. You know, the Seahawks, they'll probably force some turnovers against Miami, so 3400 you could consider them. Um the Bears at home against the Colts for 3,100, I guess, are viable. You know, the Bengals at home against the Jags, pretty bad offensive team. Like, you could definitely consider the Bengals. But, yeah, I don't really spend too much time on defense. You know, I really just play whatever defense fits into my build. I was building out an early, you know, an early look cash lineup before I started recording, like, just kind of a placeholder lineup. And I had to put the Wash or I had to put Washington football team in my, in my, you know, defense spot. And I was okay with that. You know, Washington, they're probably not going to score many points here. They're, pro or they're probably going to give up a lot of points. They're probably not going to force many turnovers, but we could get lucky. Maybe Lamar throws a pick six, or maybe Lamar, you know, fumbles on a run and we get a scoop and score. Like, defense is just so, so hard to predict. Even if a defense is in a fantastic spot, like, they could score two DraftKings points. 
I just don't dig too much into defense. I just play, you know, whatever defense fits, and no matter what that defense is, I'm fine playing it. So that's just my thoughts there, guys. I think, yeah, you know, I covered defense, pretty much broke everything down. I think we talked about everything for this week four slate. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. I really do appreciate you watching. Uh, if you did enjoy, just hit that like button before you get out of here. Hit the subscribe button as well. Be sure to click that notification bell so that way you do get notified every time I upload. And if you have not yet, if you do want to get more content from me, I have stuff available on Patreon that you can check out, link down below. Uh, you can get access to my final core plays that I will post over on Patreon Sunday morning. If you want to check all that I have to offer over there, uh, hit the link in the description and you can see all that I have to offer on Patreon. But best of luck this week, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the breakdown. Hopefully this video helped you. We will see you in the next one. Peace.